Hi everyone. So today, please welcome with me Scott McDolan, and he is amazing. He has built a learning platform that currently is using to teach the church member. Am I correct? And yep. next year, you will launch um, homeschool magnet. I mean, this is gonna be awesome. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So. Tell, okay, before we get into the platform that you are building currently and you have been building, how, become, like, how, what inspired you to become an entrepreneur since you were young? Oh, goodness, yeah. So, when, um, honestly, the, the reason for it or the uh, desire for it is because I have ideas um, and I wanted to be able to build my ideas. Uh, and, uh, and, and I grew up in a family where we were encouraged to build our ideas or to create, to, to try and create what we had in our mind. So, you know, when I was a kid, it was always Legos or it was um, building things in the garage. But then as an adult, um, my family is also entrepreneurial. So if I had, you know, I had a business idea when I was uh, 21 and built my first business uh, mm. then, and it was, and it, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> I, that company failed. <laughs> um, and, but like I got, you know, I got the bug for entrepreneurialism and uh, wanted to build my own, you know, continue to try to build my own company. What was your first company then? It was a, it was an online lead generation company uh, in ah. the real estate and mortgage industry. Okay. But that was 2007, right, right before the housing crisis here in, uh, here in the States. And, um, and it didn't go well. Like it was like about six months after we launched the lead generation company, the mortgage industry crashed along with the, the housing industry. And so there were no leads, <laughs> there were no uh, leads to generate. <laughs> and then 2008 again, the, the economy crisis. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that was not a good time. I ended up having to go get a job for a few years before starting my next, my next thing. Wow. So you, you were on break like for a while then after your first business? Yeah. Well, it was interesting though. Like that first business, I learned a lot um, in web development and internet, you know, marketing and everything. And so I ended up getting a job um, over the couple, over a few years there, getting a couple of jobs. One was as a, um, an app development manager. So I managed the development of a series of apps that were pretty popular in the app store. And then I, um, and then I joined as a marketing agency as the digital director for a, for a, a medium sized marketing agency, advertising agency. And that was, and I, I learned more and more through those. So it was interesting that I, I learned enough to get jobs and I learned a bunch of those at those two jobs. And then when I left those two jobs to start my new company, all of that information, all of that learning became, you know, very valuable to be able to actually make my next company successful. Yeah. So what inspired you to start the learning platform? I mean, this is not easy job at all. We were, we were talking offline, but like, wow, why, why you just like jump in into the learning platform? What inspired you? Well, um, at the time I needed a learning platform and I looked for, mm. um, I looked for an option that was like off the shelf, something I could just go online and find it. Um, and there were learning platforms available at the time, but they weren't, they weren't designed for what I wanted to do with it. Uh, I wanted to train my church members uh, at, at a church that I was at on some, on some different things. And everything I looked at was either, either very, very expensive or it was designed for like corporate employee training and it was, it was really big and robust and hard to use. And I wanted something really simple that wasn't expensive. Um, and so I built it for myself, you know, cause I have, I'm a web developer as well. And um, it went well, it worked really well. And I, I, I honestly wasn't really intending to build it into a business at the time. I was just trying to scratch my own itch. And, but then it turned into a business and it was great. And it's still a business. It's still my, you know, my primary revenue stream now. Mm -hmm. How many years already off that uh, platform? It's been five years, five years now on that platform. So in case anyone want to start any learning platform, like what do they have to start first? Ooh, well, um, if it's, so if you want it to be profitable, <laughs> I would say start with customers. <laughs> I would say start with customers first, not with a product or an idea. Um, and, uh, and, find customers that have a need, um, e even if you have an idea. So like, let's say, for example, um, I like to start other small little businesses just because it, 
because uh, I love the, 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 the experience of starting something. So I started this, um, I had an idea for, uh, let me start back up. I had an idea for a shower, a portable shower where you can put it in the back of your car, go to the beach, you know, get sandy or go camping and get, you know, get dirty and then shower off quickly before you get back in your car. That's what I wanted. Mm. I, like, I wanted a portable shower. There's lots of portable showers out there, but I, none of them had good water pressure. And that's important to me. I want to be able to get the sand out of my hair. We live at the beach. So um, I had an idea, but I was like, you know, I have an idea of how I want to build it, but I, I want to make sure that there are other people that like want something like this. And so I went and I, and I asked, did some customer research and I went to the beach and I asked a bunch of random people, like if you had a shower in the back of your car, what's the most important things about like a shower in the back of your car, if you're trying, you know, come in from the beach. And they told me a few things. They said, you know, water pressure, but it needs to have enough water and it needs to be, uh, you know, it needs to be poor, like, and they need to be able to pull it out of their car and you know, put it somewhere else so they don't have to have, have it with them all the time. And so I learned mm. a few things and I adjusted my expectation of what I was planning to design based on that, that feedback. Um, and I designed a, a you know, portable high pressure water, a high pressure shower, high water pressure shower um, that could plug into the 12 volt, you know, power on your car and provide you with like water pressure, like you're at home. So, um, but you know, I started with an idea. I did have an idea, but then I went straight to customer surveys or customer um, research rather than just like, I have an idea. I'm going to build my idea because if my original idea was not, it was not what I ended up with because the customer feedback um, is what uh, helped to shape it into something that was more actually, you know, meet the, met the needs of people that wanted a shower. So. Yeah. I mean, that's very important, right? If you don't ask the market, no one's going to buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and as most entrepreneurs are really idea driven, they're really vision driven. Um, and they can get tunnel vision, really. They're vision driven, but they can get tunnel vision. They can forget that, that they need to meet the needs of more than just people that are just like them. Um, I mean, sometimes that's enough. Sometimes there's enough people that are just like you and you can just build exactly what you want. And there's a lot of people like you, but most of the time, um, uh, you're going to have to adjust after you, after the, after you build the product and get it in front of people. But I just think that it's more, it's, it's more efficient to ask people first and then build your product um, than it is to build your product and then get feedback about your product. <laughs> yeah, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I personally pivot many times to get to what market one as well. So eventually sure. and, until we are where we are today, like many changes happen and we have to go with what customer want exactly. If not, no one's going to buy. Yep. 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 That happened with my uh, online learning company. I, there, the first version that I built was for me because I needed to scratch my own itch. Um, and then I, then I started doing some research and asking other people what they needed. And it was similar. Um, mm -hmm. But what's funny is even that customer research that, that ver or validated my original idea, once I got into a larger market and started selling it to lots more people, the perceived need of the customers changed. Um, and we mm. had to rebuild two years after we started the company, we had to, we had to rebuild with a different feature, a slightly different feature set um, because the need of, of a larger market was different than the need of my little niche market that I was you know, originally marketing to. Mm -hmm. the so, yeah, I understand that. Like the so, sophisticatedness, I, I couldn't speak that word today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are very details and I believe that the feedback loop is important, isn't it? And how yeah. you keep improving your product along the way, like in the past five years, I bet there were already many versions of it. Yeah, I stay close to, there have been a lot of versions of it, yeah. <laughs> I stay close to customer support and I do a lot of um, customer uh uh, what's the word um, customer interviews or customer meetings with new customers mm -hmm. still I have we have support people on the team now the customer support people but I like to do those those uh, zoom calls with customers because for me it's to keeps me close to what their needs are so that when I make decisions for the business or for the product um, I'm not making it based on my own ideas I'm making it based on feedback from customers that are actually using it because I'm not like now that I'm running the business I'm not actually a customer anymore Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I need to listen to the people who are paying me the money and trying to use the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that That's very key. I, I, I hear you what you say that you are not customer anymore, but when we build something, we want to feel as if we are the customer. And that's also something that like, I, I think I share this with many people, but many people also not really see that from my operation perspective, like the customer delivery and customer fulfillment are like two parallel paths that have to go along the way, but totally different way of 
doing this thing like back yeah. end and also how your customer experience this is like totally different but have to lead to the end goal at the same way that they are happy and this is not easy but yeah. it could be yeah, yeah. simple with changes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel so, the same way yeah so let me ask you this from the learning platform to homeschooling what is your vision you told me that you always start from the vision so what is your vision on this thing yeah so starting from the vision um it started from a couple of things we homeschool our kids uh -huh. and um or i say we mostly my wife homeschools our kids <laughs> and i help with tutoring because i'm so she's good at making sure that they're doing the work and she's good at helping them. But when they get stuck, she's not great at helping them when they get stuck on a prop, like a math problem, or if they're having difficulty at a certain reading level. So I'm the one that comes in and tutors, which is great because I work from home and she's a home stay at home mom. So I'm around, but most families aren't like us where, you know, they, they have access to both parents to be able to help with homeschooling. Um, and so uh, you know, of course, we also have a lot of homeschool friends. And so I was just talking with them. And, you know, it, it was there, especially over the last few months, the theme of frustration and um, exhaustion, you know, from everybody having to stay home because of the, the pandemic has been like recurring, lots of people saying just exhausted with homeschool already, it's only September, and I'm already exhausted with this. Um, and so you know, I set out, I was like, well, I, if people are complaining, there's a lot of people complaining about the same thing, there, there's a problem to be solved. And so I put on my entrepreneur hat again, and I was like, I want to go figure it out. And so I started with a custom, customer interviews or, you know, market interviews. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the theme over and over again was, I want to homeschool, you know, I, I either I, want, I don't want my kid in school, or the kid, the schools are closed, or um, or I want my, I want to be able to be, we, we want to have freedom in our family, but it's so, uh, it's so frustrating um, to, you know, to be the teacher, to pick out all the curriculum, to be the, to do the tutoring myself. And also to make sure that my kid has like some friends they can play with. Like, you know, when you pull them mm -hmm. out of school, they, they lose a lot of friends. And so, um, so uh, yeah, so I was like, okay, I sat down and I mapped out what, what we could do, what we could build to solve those problems. And it's morphed even over the last month of, um, Honestly, even this week, it's it's morphing and changing as it as we're better understanding the problem, both sides of the problem. Because the other side of the problem isn't just that families are frustrated; it's that teachers are out of work. Mm. Um, and so we are the way that homeschool magnet works is that we're connecting teachers, like credentialed teachers, with license to teach and education to teach with um, with families who who are homeschool families. Um, and we're just using our learn my the learning platform we own, like that I've we've built. We're using that as the go between online but um, making it uh, more, making it it's just a different approach to homeschool. So it was, it's kind of two problems coming together um, with one solution, I guess you could say. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause we have seen like those tutoring online, there are many of it, but really for teacher that's certified teacher, that is another story. Like you have to yeah. pre-web them, you have to have yeah. the standard or I don't want to think that it's going to be many layers to go through. <laughs> yep. and yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. But so it was starting from you also homeschool your kid, but what makes you decided to homeschool your kids then? Well, uh, number one, the first reason was for freedom. We wanted to be able to travel. Um, mm. So uh, a few years ago, yeah, 2016, my family, me and my wife decided we wanted to live on a boat and we didn't want to, um, we didn't want to uh, only live on a boat. We didn't only want to just visit, like have a boat and just take it out on the weekends. We wanted to live on it and, and travel. And you can't do that if your kids are in school. So uh, they were three and five, you know, they were before really homeschool age, but we want, we decided then if we want to be able to live the life that we want to live and travel, like we want to travel, then our kids can't be in school. Mm -hmm. So we decided back then to homeschool. Um, we lived for a, uh, over a year on a boat on anchor in the Bahamas. So that was awesome. Yeah. Um, homeschool, homeschooled them from the boat. And this is what like, that's part of like, I was starting my business back then as well. So um, that, was, that was in the first two years of starting the business, which is all, you know, still very new early on. And homeschooling made it possible for us to, uh, to live and travel. We spent an um, extended amount of time in Europe. I can, we want to go get to Asia, by the way. We want to get to um, the whole Pacific Rim and Thailand. Um, but that's a, a bigger trip for a time that when maybe the pandemic has passed. 
Um, anyway, so uh, homeschooling was about freedom for us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am a strong believer and I really support to build a business that support your lifestyle. Like that is my core belief of my company even like we're not gonna run the business that we couldn't live our life like 100 percent. Right. yeah so we have only one life and we want to rock it right so we don't know <laughs> when this time gonna pass on this earth and yeah that's awesome so you still have the boat right you you bought the boat you mean yes we bought the boat, but we don't wow. have it anymore we sold it yeah, we sold it though. So like we bought it. it was funny. We bought a really old beat up boat and I did a lot of work to like rent like to renovate it and make it, you know, we lived on it for a while. And then by the time we sold it, because it was so old and we bought it for so cheap, we did the unthinkable and we sold a used boat for more than we bought it for. Um, ah. so, and, uh, and the, the new owner took it on a 5,000 mile trip, um, that next year after we, um, after we sold it. And he that's loved awesome. That, that yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Couldn't wait to go back to travel again, isn't it? Like I'm yeah. counting down the time right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have we have um we had a trip to down to South America that we had to cancel this year, and then we've got a trip to um Japan next year that we're hoping is not gonna be canceled, all of which was you know booked before the pandemic started. So yeah, I, really I know. I have to pivot as well. I, I decided to came back home in Thailand, like within yeah. two weeks, actually like mm. four weeks ago or something like that. So mm. yeah, it's very fast. Like I just want to be more with my family because I don't know how long the travel restriction going to last and don't want to take that risk. Yep. Yep. I understand. <laughs> so yeah, you mentioned one thing about the school system that um, I also somehow, so I'm not a fancy person at all. I just normal Thai student that like went to Thai school and also have a Thai community like connection. And it's very important. I mean, from growing up along the way, networking with like school friends or university friends is quite important. So what do you see in terms of like homeschooling? How do you going to build the community and this network moving forward? Yeah. Okay. So we have two sides to our, to our community that we're going to build. We have a teacher side and a family side. Um, on the family or on the teacher side of things, I've hired already hired a um, head of faculty and teacher advocate um, who mm. um, will be part of her job. Will be developing community on the teacher side of things, helping teachers to our teachers to work together to make um, you know, make the ex experience really great for families. And then on the family side, um, the students are all in a classroom together, or in a virtual classroom together. And um, we have, as part of the curriculum, will be, um, we'll be group video call experiences that are optional, so not mandatory group video calls, but um, sort of like, um, I don't know if you have this concept in Thailand, but of a homeroom. Um, mm -hmm. Where the students come together and they just kind of hang out, like, usually in high schools, it's like the first class of the day. You can, you know, you get to school, you you can see your friends in homeroom. You get maybe your last minute homework done before the like the rest of the day starts. So um, we're gonna do stuff like that where the kids they're they're at home. They're not with their friends in person, but they can have fun on video calls. And the teachers will um, will facilitate a fun uh, experience for the kids, whether it's playing games together on Zoom calls or. Um, or doing trivia stuff or, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to, but like, like just fun stuff to make sure the kids are relating to their classmates, um, developing friendships and letting, you know, letting the kids get to know each other. Yeah, we do have that. I think we call it the same way, like home, I'm home trying room. to try, I'm trying to translate back into Thai, but my <laughs> brain is not working right now. So yeah, I think we do have that like 30 minutes before kickstart the day. So it's like preparing yeah. the whole day. Yeah I, yeah, I I think we have that. Yeah, it's been a long time, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> yeah, I mean, that's very important. And funny enough, like me and you have never met before, we still able to connect virtually. So I think connection really not matter physically. It's actually who you communicate with and like the the belief, the core value. I think these are more important. But seems like what you just mentioned, you actually build a school that have the core curriculum, right? And then they can enroll. Is that something yep. like that? Yep, it's gonna be like that. Where the the one of the unique things is um, that. 
uh, our teachers, our, our families, or rather the parents are going to get to choose the teacher, the right teacher for their kids. So the parents will be mm. able to get the teachers that we are, that are in our, you know, that we offer, that, that are in our platform. Um, so, and then interview the different teachers and then choose the right teacher for their kids. So if you, if your kid is creative and mm-hmm. wants to learn creative ways, or maybe they're a tactile learner and they have to use their hands, then you can choose a teacher that's creative and tactile. If you, um, if you have a kid that is more of a cerebral kid and they learn by thinking, they learn, they love to read, they like problem solving, then that kid, you know, you may want to find a teacher that teaches in a way that will meet that kid's needs. Um, if you have a kid that's very social and really just like wants to, you know, uh, have a lot of interaction, then find a teacher that will have more Zoom calls, more video calls to join um, because, you know, they're, you're, that child wants more social interaction. So that's one of the unique things is parents will be able to come to homeschoolmagnet.com and browse our available teachers, interview the ones that are most interesting to them, and then choose based on their, their child's needs. Yeah, good thing with one way is like outsource the education. But on the other hand, it's like quite similar to the way that university work, like or college in your country. I'm not sure how you call it, but yeah, like how you enroll yeah. each faculty and then like understand more. But age, age links wise, like what are the age for the kids to join um, homeschool magnet? Um, it's good. We're going to start with third grade through eighth grade, um, which is probably... Uh, t- uh, maybe nine or 10 through 14 or so. No, normally after that, what, what children do after that age? Like uh, well, high school? After that, they go to high school, right? So yeah, they go into high school. Uh, they, uh, um, or they go to yeah, a private school or a high school or some families continue to, to homeschool into high school. It just gets more complicated and more difficult um, to mm. homeschool it. We're planning, we're planning to open up high school, but um, that's a, it's, it's, um, we have to start somewhere and it it was, it was going to be difficult to start with third through 12th grade, um, you know, with nine years instead of just six years. So, or that's 10 years instead of just six years. So yeah, we started deciding it was just the six years. Yeah. I have seen the differences between um, thinking about back in the days that before I made decision, which country I'm going to study abroad. And the way that like educational platform have totally different understanding, like vocational, professional path, like how to go to university and then like the high school thingy. Because I think Thai, Thai school, we have also vocational one and also um, the one that like me, science maths program or something like that. And that's totally another game changer because it's determined somehow the way that you're going to go to the higher education, right? But it's mm-hmm. very important. Um, I'm very excited for you, actually. I, I love about education. Like, I, I really into it. Like, I think it's very important. Whatever language it is or, like, friends surrounding you and also the curriculum that really show you your interest. Because here's the thing. I am not easy to understand person. This is so funny. My mom spent a lot of t- money and time to find the better tutor for me to explain physics, for example. <laughs> I, I, I'm very bad at physics, like apart from like chemistry or biology, I'm okay with that. But physics, I'm like, I ask my parents, I just give up, but I have to graduate <laughs> that. I have to earn the degree. If not, I couldn't get to law school. So I graduated from law school. So they have been searching all over the place, believe it or not, like to get me someone who able to explain the same thing that any other people say in different way that I understand. Like, I'm that hard to understand. So, I mean, I understand that this um, tutorial and to find the right teacher is very important for the child, like me, who knows the problem of themselves. And wow, this is going to be amazing. God. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully it will. Yeah. Yeah. So, in case anyone wants to follow you on your uh, homeschool magnet, how can they reach out to you then? Uh, Homeschoolmagnet.com. Just go to the website and uh, we'll have chat there uh, or you can just su- submit a contact form if you have, if anybody has questions about homeschool magnet. Yeah, cool. So if anyone listening and interested in homeschool, just check it out. Okay. Thank you so much, Scott, for joining me today and sharing your awesome story. Yeah, for sure. My pleasure. Hey, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed the show, you can subscribe here or here. 
And this is the previous episode. Check it out. See you next time.